Hi, I'm Keith Deason, and today we're going to make an archery bow out of this old ski. So I found this under a staircase I was renovating years ago, and I thought it was cool, so I held on to it. I am pretty sure it's made out of white oak. So I've never made a bow before, I've never even tried to make a bow before, except when I was a little kid, and I used to, you know, take uh, willow vines and tie them to sticks and shoot other sticks across my yard. So I didn't really have a plan, I just did things that made sense with a little bit of knowledge I had. First, I cut the end off to make it less unwieldy, and then I had to cut the ski straight down the middle as best I could to make the top and bottom arms of the bow. So for me, the bandsaw was the best tool to use because of the curve at the end of the bow would make it very difficult to do on the table saw, and the thicker blade of the table saw would take away too much material. You could also use a jigsaw or a handsaw to do this, and probably nobody would leave any comments in your video about how your sleeves are too close to the blade. A quick sanding, not any shape changing, I just wanted to get the old finish and all the old wax and gunk off of this piece. I cut this piece in half. Uh, I don't remember why. I think I thought I was going to construct part of the bow out of it, make kind of a locking tenon thing. I even went as far as to sand it, but I, uh, I didn't really use any of these pieces. But you still get to watch me sand, because it's process. Okay, uh, the angle of the limbs here on the bow has to be about 15 to 20 degrees. I believe I cut these at exactly 20 degrees. And what I'm cutting here is not an attachment angle or a joinery angle, it is... Uh, to make this lamination all seamless. This was where I was tinkering to figure out exactly how I was going to construct the riser or the handle of this bow. It's essentially going to be a four piece lamination. The rear piece has two angles cut to 20 degrees to match the limb angles. This leaves me with a nice flat glue surface for the front of the lamination, which I'm going to cut now. I made longer cuts at the same 20 degree angle so that we have a nice curved profile to the entire bow that rests comfortably and also bends somewhat uniformly. And I know I didn't make my cuts in the safest way on that miter saw and I urge you to do it the safest and most comfortable way possible for you and not to necessarily do what I'm doing. Alright, and it's time for the glue up. It was about at this point that I had started to realize that the lamination technique I'm using might not be strong enough to hold up to the multiple tens of pounds of pressure that drawing a bow exerts on, well, the bow. But this is one of those seat of your pants builds that I did, so I figured it out later. And if you're wondering, like, where to find a wooden ski, uh, you know, that weird aunt that you have that always puts sleds outside of her house at Christmas time, she's probably got one sitting around that she, like, hangs over the fireplace or something. You could probably snatch that without her even realizing, because I hear she loves wine. Well, did you see that? I just sanded that part flat. And now I'm tracing my hand to make a nice contoured grip. And also tracing out some aesthetic contours to make the bow just look better and, I don't know, maybe it helps it fire better, but it definitely helps it look better. There we go, this is a much better setup for filming sanding. So what I'm doing here is carving in those curves I just drew on the handle. Both the overall contours and the ones designed to give me a better grip because they're shaped like my hand. And it's looking really cool at this point. Really cool. A little more sanding with the random orbits just to get everything nice and smooth, get all the splinters out, try to uniform up the color a little bit. And look at that. That is nice and contoured and ready for a finish, I think. And it feels great in my hand. So about an inch to an inch and a half from the top of the bow limbs, I cut these slots to hold the strings. The notches, I guess they're called. Either way, cut them, file them to make them kind of V-shaped, and they'll hold the strings just fine. And nobody can open a can of Danish oil that's already been opened without using a tool. It's just friggin' impossible. I add a nice coat of the finish, and really, it's nice wood, and it's got a cool age to it and some cool patina, so really, the wood's doing all the work here. A big part of the reason I wanted to use the wooden bow for this was, A, because I had it lying around, and B, because I've seen a lot of people build bows out of old skis before, and they usually look really weird, because the skis are newer, and they have all these logos on them, and they've got fiberglass and steel and like carbon fiber on them. 
And I think using the nice wood and splitting the ski in half lengthwise really add to the elegance of this piece. And it is unfortunate that at this point I realize that I don't think my joinery and my lamination is going to hold up to a full draw on this bow. And I really don't want it exploding in my face. So way back in the old school what they would do is they would wrap buffalo sinew or some kind of animal sinew around the lamination in order to strengthen the whole thing. It acts as kind of like a fiberglass barrier, but luckily these days we have extremely strong Gorilla duct tape. And it added a lot of strength. It worked. However, it looks like butt. So I harvested the leather wrapped handles off of these old tennis and squash rackets. It was a bit of a pain in the butt, but at this point it was better than custom making my own leather handle wrap out of leather I had already, which was just too thick and unwieldy to try to work with. And I know not everybody has access to like five or six vintage tennis rackets, so the tape is doing the work here. This is just to cover the mess. If you're tackling this project, then, you know, you could use whatever you want that would look nice. Some cloths, just do a better taping job in the first place, whatever. I bet you thought this was going to be kind of a traditional woodworking guide to building a bow, but it's not. I'm using hot glue, I'm using duct tape. And for the finishing touch, I did end up using a piece of my scrap leather, mostly because I ran out of tennis racket handles. At this point, you can't really see the hand grip anymore, but you can still feel it below all the leather and the tape, so that's fortunate. The bowstring is made of nylon mason's twine, which is very strong for its thickness and does not stretch. You start off by making an 8 inch loop on the end and twisting it around you know, 10 or 12 times. It's a lot easier to use a vise and wrap it around your finger like this than it is to do it on a flat tabletop. Then you coat the entire twisted part in hot glue, like really fully coat it. You can use the nozzle to spread it around if you need to. Once that's entirely dry, you take a thinner piece of duct tape and you wrap it around the twisty part to further reinforce the string. Tie a knot in the bottom. Eventually. It's not easy after all that sanding. Cut the excess and string up your bow. And there you go. Well, it looks like a bow, right? It looks like a bow, it feels like a bow, but there's only one true test of whether or not it's a bow. It's got to fire arrows at a target. And so we need a target. A little rigid insulation with some hardboard backer and some spray paint does the job nicely. So my form is probably terrible. I've never fired a bow and arrow before. Did you see that? That throwing the arrow on the ground thing? That was cool, right? I did that just for you guys. I'm mostly trying to look as cool as possible while also maintaining accuracy and not injuring myself. If you have any tips or tricks on my form, well hell, I just hit the bullseye. You should probably just keep them to yourself, right? But seriously, feel free to make fun of me in the comments for my terrible form. Uh, I'm basically Hawkeye now, so I can take it, and uh, I'll probably just shoot you with an arrow from like 900 miles away if, if it's too mean of a comment. If you like the video and you want to see some more content around my builds without maybe hearing me talk so much, check out my Instagram. It's at Keith Decent. I barely talk at all on there, but I show a lot more in-depth parts of the builds as they're going on and afterwards. And if for some reason you like hearing me talk, you can check out my podcast from the ground up at ftgupodcast.com. It's the history of why we make stuff. I think you'll like it. And as always, subscribe if you like it, like it if you love it. Later, makers. Hey, hey, keep doing it. <laughs>